the great continents of the earth, none has been more lavishly endowed with natural wealth and beauty than has South America, which embraces over one-eighth of the earth's land area and only a little more than 3% of the world's population. Brazil itself is larger than the whole of the United States, and it has millions of acres of land that no white man has ever seen. Rio de Janeiro, the capital and largest city of Brazil, enshrined, as it were, within the majestic setting of the world's most beautiful harbor, is the crowning glory of a visit to South America. Over 400 years ago, the adventurous Portuguese explorers who discovered and claimed Brazil for the crown of Portugal sailed into this picturesque harbor and called it Rio de Janeiro, or River of January, because they discovered it in the month of January, and they believed the beautiful inlet into which we now sail was the mouth of a river. As we pass within the shadow of this gigantic promontory, which for some vague reason has been called Sugarloaf, we wonder if the white men who first saw it could have dreamed that it was destined to become the mighty sentinel of an enchanted metropolis with a population of over a million inhabitants and a reputation of being the most magnificent city in the world. The first Portuguese settlers found the country in the possession of various Indian tribes from whom many of them took their wives. It is a long and thrilling span of history between these modern battleships and the tiny boats upon which the Portuguese explorers first sailed into this harbor. But the centuries have wrought little change in the beautiful coastline, the delightful climate, and the ever-present clouds that are the natural heritage of Rio, the magnificent. As in most countries of South America, the color of one's skin does not always determine one's social standing. As a matter of fact, the racial color line seems to be so thinly drawn here that it has become a haven of toleration for all races. Nevertheless, the Portuguese language still prevails. Among the beautiful boulevards of Rio, the Avenida Beira Mar is the most picturesque with its marble promenade encircling the waterfront for a distance of five miles. This palm fringe canal is a reminder of the days when the Portuguese king removed his court to Rio and brought with him the seeds of the famous royal palms, which have since spread in picturesque profusion throughout the whole country. The period from 1902 to 1906 witnessed the wonderful transformation from the old to the new Rio, a comprehensive project so boldly conceived and so brilliantly executed that there is hardly a landmark of the old city to be seen in Rio today. Perhaps the most unique feature of the clean and spacious streets is the decorative mosaic work that adorns the sidewalks. Almost every block has a pavement with mosaic patterns so individual in design that one could almost find his way about the city by becoming familiar with them. A striking contrast between the dull and drab pavements that are so typical of most cities. Rio is not a manufacturing city, therefore foreign goods are sold in all the smart shops. Nevertheless, foreign influence has not changed the strong allegiance which the Brazilians have for their native continent. They proudly proclaim themselves South Americans, and they very much resent the North Americans' monopoly of the word American. The marketplaces of Rio are animated by an infinite variety of tropical animals. Perhaps the most interesting of all the small animals that are typical of Brazil is the marmoset, the smallest type of primate and the tiniest relative of man. The female of this species is usually more lovable and playful than the male. Although she is the smallest of monkeys, her maximum weight seldom exceeding four ounces, she is the only member of the primate family that regularly gives birth to triplets. Being one of the most tropical of animals, not one marmoset in a hundred will live when removed from tropical zones. The Jockey Club of Rio is not only one of the finest equestrian clubs in the world, but is also the center of the city's social life, the outstanding feature of which dates back to 1808, when the King of Portugal, who was forced by Napoleon to abandon his country, arrived in Brazil and established his new court in Rio. Horse racing was enthusiastically sponsored by the royal family until the overthrow of the empire in 1889. And although the emperor no longer lends his regal splendor to the scene, the beauty of the setting makes it a never-to-be-forgotten sight. 
As a matter of fact, the colorful and romantic architecture of the stadiums, the vivacious and carefree spirit of the people, and the glorious scenery around the track appear to be worthy of more attention than the race itself. A few miles from Rio, one may see the first stages of a most unique occupation, the butterfly industry of Brazil. Strangely enough, the nets which are waved to and fro actually attract the beautiful silken creatures, even as moths are attracted by flame. The butterflies of Brazil are much larger and more colorful than those of North America and Europe. Within an hour's ride from Rio, one may see as many as 700 different species. After the butterflies are caught, they are usually sold to small shops in the city, where their wings, at least, are immortalized by an art that was developed in Rio several years ago. A design is first painted on glass, and the delicate butterfly wings, which have been carefully assorted for the best colors, are cleverly worked into the design and held in place by adhesive tape. Another layer of glass is finally placed over the tape, and the wings, thus preserved, will hold their lifelike colors indefinitely. The completed articles range from chessboards to bonbon dishes and vanity cases. And needless to say, the predominating design in all of this work is none other than Sugarloaf, the center of attraction for all eyes that glory in the magnificence of Rio. The ascent to Sugarloaf by way of this aerial railway affords the great thrill of a visit to Rio and the incomparable view from the summit presents a scene wherein both man and nature have combined their efforts to create the most magnificent harbor in the world. Somehow we behold in our final impressions of Rio a semblance of what great changes have come to pass in the world at large, where the beauties of nature have been harmonized with the constructive forces of man. And it is with this thought that we say, farewell to Rio, the magnificent. <laughs>